What's up guys? My name is Emily Cohen. If you're new to the channel, I normally make Ultimate Frisbee content, but today I'm going to be making just a general video on how to make any team sport. So I'm somebody that has a wide background in sports. I've made teams in soccer, in softball, Ultimate Frisbee. I also ran winter track. So I've made a lot of different teams. I've been involved in a lot of different sports. I'm just going to go over some of the things that I have done that have made me so successful. So let's start off with probably the most important thing, and that's to make sure that you actually register properly. So if you're trying out for a school team, then normally you need a physical. You also have to fill out some emergency medical forms. Sometimes there's a tryout fee. So just make sure that you bring all of your forms that you've registered properly so that you can actually try out. Number two, stay in your zone. This is very important. So when you get to the tryouts, you want to check into the coach and then after that, normally you'll start your warm up, or you might have some dead time to just kind of stretch or do whatever you need to do. So during this time, it's very easy to get intimidated by all the rest of the players. And what you want to do is you just want to focus on yourself and pay as little attention as possible to everybody else because they just don't matter. They don't matter to whether you're going to make it or not. Even no matter how good they look in warmups, that doesn't mean that they're going to be able to do it in the skill portion of the tryout. So you just want to focus on warming up correctly and getting yourself in the mindset that you need in order to be successful. Number three, pace yourself during conditioning. So one of the worst things that you can do is to just start the first sprint at 100% and then worst case scenario is you burn all of your energy and not only fail the conditioning part, but you're fatigued for the skill part, and then you just didn't get to show what you could do. So it's very important that you're pacing yourself through conditioning. Always assume that there's going to be more. If you can't run 100% for the next rep, you're going too hard. So it's very important to pace yourself, but still be respectable. You want to ideally be around the middle of the pack through the first three fours, and then for the last fourth, you want to push towards the front to be impressive. That's the most ideal situation. And then hopefully by doing this, you still have energy for the skill part. So there's a lot of strategy that goes into this, but in general, you just want to make sure that you don't burn all of your energy and then just are completely dead for the rest of the tryouts. Number four, make sure you're trying out for the correct position. So if you're somebody that plays multiple positions, it can be kind of difficult to figure out what position will give you the best chance of making it. So what you wanna do is you want to figure out what position is going to allow you to show off your skill set the best and then try out for that position. You also should talk to the coach and see if you can try out for both positions Sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. So you wanna do that and try out for the position that gives you the best chance of making the team. Number five, always be hustling. So this is something where I feel like most people are okay at this, but when you really maximize this area to its potential, it really separates you from your competition. So there are lots of little instances during the tryouts where you can hustle, where it's not necessarily the most obvious thing. So when you're in a drill, you never want to just walk back to the back of the line. You want to high pace jog to the back of the line. And if there's like a throw that goes way over your head, don't give up on it. You want to run it out. Even if it's like 50 yards over your head, just run it out. And when the coach gives you a water break, don't walk in, high pace jog in. And same thing when you're going out, jog back out. So there's just like so many little opportunities where 
hustling will just really separate you from the competition. Number six, pay attention. So a lot of drills have a lot of tiny variations. You wanna make sure that you're actually doing the version that the coach wants you to do. If you mess up, it can potentially be pretty bad. You can potentially cause a collision. You can just flat out run the wrong direction. So you wanna make sure that you're paying attention and running the correct drill so that you don't mess up. Number seven, use positive body language. You want to try to use positive body language whenever possible. If you make a mistake, you don't want to sulk or get depressed or get frustrated because it just brings more attention to your mistake. If you maintain positive body language and just go to the back of the line, it potentially was no big deal. If you make a mistake, you want to try to stay as positive as possible so you don't bring any more unnecessary attention to the mistake. Number eight, be professional. So there are lots of little opportunities where it's very easy to get sucked into other people's negativity or it's just a little too easy to get really casual. So when you're on the sideline, like in a water break or something, you don't wanna be on your phone. You don't wanna be talking about stuff unrelated to the tryouts. It's really easy to kind of get sucked into like other people's chit chat. You just don't want to engage with them. Remember, stay in your zone. And then sometimes like people will be really negative. Well, they'll just be like saying, this drill sucks or why are we doing so much conditioning? Like stuff like that. You just really don't want to engage with stuff like that. You just want to be positive and maintain a professional demeanor. Number nine, minimize trash talk. So in general, it's just not gonna be worth the risk. It's just not worth it. The coach can potentially be offended by it or just think that you have an attitude or who knows what. So just in general, just refrain from trash talk because it's just not worth the risk. Number 10, be accommodating. So. A lot of times there are some opportunities where you can show that you're a team player and if you can do that, that's really great. However, you just want to make sure that you're not being so accommodating that you're basically trying out for the wrong position. So when there are opportunities to show that you can be a team player, you want to do it and that will help potentially make you make the team. Number 11, manage your nerves. So there are a lot of different strategies for how to control nerves and you just want to pick the strategy that you are okay with. There's strategies where you just kind of let the nerves exist. There's strategies where you're just kind of constantly managing your thoughts. So you just want to pick the strategy that works best for you. Number 12, leave a good last impression. So once the trial is over, you want to be as helpful as possible and see if you can pick up cones or just see if anybody needs any help. And then you want to go and thank the coach for their time and the opportunity. And hopefully you make the team. So that's going to be it for this video. So like if you liked it, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.